Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to change the blog layout in Squarespace. If you are used to using Squarespace version 7.0, changing between website templates was a huge issue. There were different functions that were available on different templates, but not others. Um, but thankfully in Squarespace 7.1, Every single blog feature is available on every template. So there's no need to install an entirely new website and have to move all of your content over. You can simply make style changes to the blog layout right in your existing Squarespace website where you have your blog already set up or a new blog that you want to set up. So keep watching to see how we can make changes on the overall blog landing page and on the individual blog post level. It can feel a little bit confusing if you're not used to Squarespace 7.1, so let's hop into it. So I have installed a new template. I just chose one that was under the blog category. This is not customized to my colors or any of my content, but when you first land on your back end of your Squarespace site, this is going to be the main menu. So to navigate to the blog, you're gonna to wanna to go to pages and it's going to be filled with demo content indicated by this little demo kind of gray text here. So to access your blog page, you're going to click on blog and you're going to find that there are some filler blog posts that are already installed and pre-installed with your template. You can feel free to keep these for now. It's going to allow us to make some changes to these styles and you can see them in real time. Um, and I'll show you how to delete those in another video. First up, we are going to edit the overall look of the blog page. This blog page is where people are going to land and they can see a preview of multiple blog posts at the same time. So we're gonna cover the settings for the individual blog posts in a second, or not second, in a minute. And I'm just gonna show you how to make changes on this blog page level first. So to access these settings, we're going to go right up here to the left-hand corner of the blog page and click on edit. Then when you move your cursor over to the blog page itself, you're going to see this pencil set, uh, pencil icon and it's going to say edit section. Just go ahead and click on that. Now, first up, we have the format tab. These are the format settings for how it looks, how your blog post previews look on this page with things like spacing. Um, so first up, we can change the actual layout. Right now, depending on what template you've installed, it's going to have a specific layout already in here. For me, this is the single column blog, but if you go between these, you're going to see how it then changes them depending on what you're choosing here. So for the basic grid, you're gonna see this is more like a table style. Then we have like alternating side by side. Now there is space in here because there is no image associated with this particular template with these blog posts. But if you have a template with images, you're gonna see a big image in here and it's going to alternate back and forth on each side. I'm just gonna keep it with the single column blog that it was sitting at already. And you're just gonna pick whichever one you like most. Now underneath this, you can see that there are lots of other changes we can make. So there's page spacing. I have found that this doesn't really change too much if you go from inset to full width. I generally keep it at full width, but you are going to see, just a second, let me save this. Sometimes it's a little glitchy once you make some changes to make sure we can see the excerpt here. So once I go back into edit and the different things here. We're going to see text content width. Um, you can move this back and forth and you're going to see how it changes. You can also just go and uh, select the number here and manually change it to a number. Vertical spacing as well is the spacing between each individual blog post preview. So if we move this to the right, it's going to increase it. You can see that size increasing here. And if we move it to the left, there's very little spacing between those two. Now, if we scroll down, you're going to see that we have some sec uh, some settings for the images. Again, I don't have any preview images on this particular template. I guess I chose a bad one for this example, but you can, if you did have an image in here, you can see that you can move it either above or below the post itself. And you also can move the space between the image and the title and the metadata of the blog post by moving it to the right and to the left here. Next up, we have text alignment for the post itself. Again, let me go and save this. Again, this is a little glitchy, which Squarespace can be from time to time. I wanna make sure we can sh see the excerpt here. The next thing that we have is the text alignment. So right now for my template, it's automatically at left, but again, we can change it to center and right. And the read more link, which is right here, which is allows people to read the full blog post. We can either show this or we can have it hidden. 
And again, title spacing, if we increase this, you'll see that this increases the space between um, the title and the excerpt and the read more spacing will change the space between the excerpt that very stubbornly is not showing up right now, but it will again, move it to the left and right and you can change your spacing. Next up, we have the metadata. Metadata is data that is associated with the blog post, such as the date that it's published, the author, or the category. Now, as a rule, I choose not to show what date the blog post was written. I just don't want people to throw out the, you know, maybe relevant information for a blog post because they just think that it's too old. Maybe it was written a few years ago, but the, everything in the blog post is still relevant. I don't want people to make that assumption just by seeing the date. So I choose to hide this, but you can change all of these settings right here under the meta section. So meta position, we can change right now. For me, it's on top. We can change it to below the excerpt. Um, then we have prima met primary meta content. Right now it is set as categories, which there aren't any by default within the blog, so it isn't showing up. But if you change this to date, you're gonna see that it shows date. And then we have secondary shows date as well. Um, let's just say it was author. I, and here's my name right here. So if we wanted to hide these, we could just go to none. And then that way it's not going to show, especially if you have only one author on your blog, every single author for every blog post is gonna be the same. So I don't necessarily use that on my blog. Um, I choose not to show anything. And this is how you can do it is changing these to none. Now, again, if we do have this date in here, we can go ahead and change the spacing um, either between the metadata and the title or the metadata and the excerpts that will be showing down below there. Next up, we have the iconography section. Now it's so funny that we have a delimiter style that shows bullet, um, pipe, dash, or space. Um, this has never changed and has never worked for me in at least the last five years I've been using Squarespace. So I just, and you know, ignore this altogether. Now you could, the most important thing under here is to display content. Again, let me show you if we have this at full post, it's going to show all of the blog post content with, if, if you're like me and you have a really long blog post generally for each one, you don't necessarily wanna show the whole thing. So you can choose just to show the excerpt and the title, or again, full blog post is going to, for some reason it's not showing that, or you can have it show just the title only. I generally like to show the excerpt, but if I show full post here and click done and save, it's going to show everything in that blog post right here. Now again, let me go in here. Now we've covered the format tab here, we can go over to colors. You're going to see that based on your template being installed, if you haven't changed any colors in the site styles yet, you're going to see these automatically generated 10 color palettes within the colors settings here. So depending on what this is already set at, we can just go ahead and choose between all of these. It's going to show us in the preview. I recommend not choosing a crazy colored background. You wanna make it really easily readable. I generally choose a white background for my blog pages and my blog posts, but if you want to make it anything different, it was set up by default here for light two, which is what I'm going to choose to keep it at that. Once you are done making any changes, you always want to make sure you go done and save and save any changes. Now, in Squarespace 7.1, they've added the ability for you to add sections above and below this blog page. So this is what's calling the blog, this is what I'm calling the blog page. So again, this is showing the preview of your blog post, but you'll see here that you can add sections above or below. This is really great for drawing attention um, to other things like opt-ins, or if you wanna add a little thin section that has a search bar or categories drop down to make it really user-friendly, this is a great place to add those in here. You can add as many sections as you want above or below this blog page preview section. So to add a section, we just go, um, you can see when we hover above, when we're in the editing function, again, from the home page or from the home blog page, we click on edit, and then you'll see this add section shows up. We just click on that. You can either add a blank section and add in different blocks and design it yourself, or you can choose from all of these pre-designed type sections that blog, uh, Squarespace already has in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add, let's say like a headline in here. It's going to have the filler content. Again, you're then gonna go and you're gonna change out you know, the text or the buttons or the background to make it yours. And let's just say I'm gonna you know, want to add another section in here. You can see you can add one to above or below what is already in here. I'm just gonna add another one below. And let me just say, I don't know, I'm gonna go and add a list, I guess. I don't 
don't know, let's add this one. And again, you're going to go and then change these out. And then you can see that your blog preview page section is still in here. Let's say if we wanted to add one below, same thing. We just go down, scroll to the bottom, not over the footer, but right above the bottom here, we can see that there's an add section. We're going to click on that. Let's just say I'm going to add, I don't know, quote at the bottom and just add this quote section in here. So again, you're going to make any changes, change the, um, you know, text, change any images. And then when you're ready and you're happy with the sections that you've added again always click on done and save now there's one more setting that you can make changes for your blog page here and that's how many individual blog posts you're showing as the preview right here in this blog page section so to change this we're going to go to this gear icon that is to the right of the blog kind of home screen here this menu we're going to click on that and then if we scroll down here, we're under, under the general tab and we're gonna scroll down, you're gonna see that it shows posts per page. Now we can change this. I generally like to show anywhere between five and 10. So if you have uh, more than the number of blog posts you have here, like there's four filler ones. If I choose two, whoops, and we always click on save, what that's going to do is it's going to show two of the blog posts as previews, and then it's going to make this button here that says older posts. When you click on that, it's going to show the older posts here. And again, it's going to keep those sections above or below that blog page that you already, um, that's already the default within this blog page. So we can go on newer. Now, again, if we want to change this, we're going to gear icon. I'm going to go ahead and change this up to 10 and anything up to 10 blog posts, there will not be a button at the bottom that says older and newer. Um, whoops, let me refresh this, it didn't update that. So this one, I only have four filler blog posts here, but I want it to show 10. I don't know why it's posts per page. It's being a little glitchy today, but if you have less blog posts than what you want to display on this page, it just won't have these buttons below that show older and newer. So it's pretty simple. And then once you reach 11 blog posts, it will then show those buttons below there that people and your website visitors can then scroll and read your multiple ones. So now it's time to make some changes to the individual blog posts. We've made changes to this blog post page. Um, or sorry, what I'm calling the blog page, but we want to make individual changes to the individual blog posts. So when, again, when you sign up with a template and install a template, it's generally going to insert these filler blog posts. So whichever one you want to make changes, we're just going to click on that one and it's going to load the individual blog post here on the right. Now, before we go any further, note that any changes that you make to one blog post in a specific blog, it's also going to make those changes, those design changes to every single other blog post in here. So that means you can't have a specific background color for one blog post and have a different background color for another blog post. It's going to be consistent for this entire blog here that all of these blog posts are in. So to make the changes to the blog post, again, we have one loaded, but you can click on any of these other blog posts here to access them. Then you're going to click on edit and to the right of the blog post here, the filler content, you're going to see edit section. Much like on the blog page, this is going to bring up all the different things that you can change in terms of the format and the color options. So the first thing that you can change is the content width of the blog. Um, you can see if we go narrow, it's going to, you know, you can preview what that's going to look like. You can also choose custom. So you can choose 50% will be 50% of the width of your screen, depending on how big your screen is. You can make any changes in here and you can also go back to just the regular ones. Text alignment. Now this is going to change the alignment of the title and the metadata only, not the content of the blog. That's automatically going to default to left. So I like to always put my text uh, for my title at center and the metadata position. Again, if you have this showing, um, you can have it show above the title or below the title. For me, it doesn't matter because I actually don't show these. Now, if you wanted to have your category show, that's great, but I definitely like to take the date out here. So you can just toggle the different 
pieces of metadata here on and off. Now author profile is only if you have one set up. This is going to show at the bottom of your blog post. I would recommend using this function um, if you have a blog that has a lot of traffic and you want to have a bio at the bottom where they can you know easily click to the home page which they can do from the logo at the top of any of these blog posts so I don't see why you would do that. But if you have multiple contributors to your blog it would be really great to set up um, under their administrative account, different author profiles, and then you can just have it show automatically whenever they publish new blog posts. I'm gonna turn this off for now. Again, the delimiter style, just like on the blog page, literally has never worked for me. I don't even touch that. And then we have the header spacing. So again, we scroll this to the right and the left, and this is the space between the title and the blog content itself. Just like on the blog page, you can click on the colors tab at the top here and click between any of the 10 pre-chosen um, color palettes in here that it automatically generates from the colors from the entire website. Again, you can choose whatever you want, but I prefer, and for readability purposes, for ease of readability, I recommend choosing a blog post template with a white background. Um, anything else is sometimes really hard to read. Um, a light, a white or a light background is recommended. Um, I would recommend not having a bright color and even a dark color on the back it can be really hard to read for some people's eyesight. Um, but make your own decision here. And again, any change you make on this color level is going to affect every single other blog post. So make sure that any choices that you make here are going to be relevant towards the other ones. So again, when you're making any changes to the settings, we're always going to click on done and save. In the next video, which you'll find linked up below this one, or if you're reading it on the blog post, just scroll down. I'm going to show you how to change the font style and these color settings for your blog and your blog page.